Remember when setting up recurring tasks in Notion was so much of a hassle than help? Managing these tasks was so time consuming, forcing you to use third party integrators. Convoluted formulae, giving up history or resetting these tasks manually. And I've always wished for this control of this frequency, keeping track of history, resetting these statuses, getting the due dates just right. But all of this automatically. Well, guess what? Finally, there's this seamless way to master recurring tasks without any of these usual frictions. Let me show you how it works. So the simple way of configuring a Notion automation is by using triggers and actions. But before we configure this automation, we have to configure the database so that our Notion automation simply works. And that database is the weak flow database that I've just created. Now I use this database for my projects and tasks. And for automation to work, you have to first define when the trigger needs to start. But for that, I will need to add three new properties, the status, the frequency, and the X days. Now, if you take the status property, it has four options, not started, in progress, done, and end. And when we mark the current task is done, the next task pops up. But we need this flexibility of stopping these recurring task instances whenever you feel that your purpose for that recurring task is done. And that's why I've added this end instead of done. But then again, we need to give Weakflow a clear definition of the repeat frequency. That's when I realized that the frequency trigger is broadly split between day calculations and month calculations. Now, if you break down the frequency for days a little further, you will get daily, alternate day, every three days, weekly, fortnightly. And we'll add a few more as you'll realize soon. But you know, there are these tasks that don't require to repeat. And that's why I've added one more condition called single for these non-repeating tasks. Now, most conditions are fulfilled with just these options. Sometimes you want to have events that are repeatable based on a completely customized interval. And that's why I've added another option called X days. But you need to define what X is. And that's the reason why there's this X days number property. So under different circumstances, you could have completely different X days setups. Let's take the example of a marketing plan. And you could be tracking the progress through a meeting, which could happen every 21 days. Now that we've got the days out of the way, let's focus on months. I've split the month frequencies up into monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, half yearly, and annual. Now let's see this in action. So each task has a from date and a to date, which is the start date and the end date. The end date is the due date. When a task is marked as complete, the automation calculates the next set of dates based on the frequency and then creates a new record with updated from and to dates, the start and end dates. Now there's this done date property that records the completion date and time, and it uses this same automation. And now there's this task days property that records the number of days it took from the start date, the from date, to the completion of the task, which is the date on which it's triggered. Now you can choose to change the from and to dates differently based of the actual number of task days that you've captured. So all future transactions or future tasks tasks could be influenced by that. When a task is completed or ended, a formula marks the due status as completed. Otherwise, it calculates the relative due date for the date, like it says tomorrow, in a week, and so on. A task date property combines these using a date range formula. Now the X days property defaults to one if it's not manually changed. Now there are other things in this template that I've configured, including two other databases, the project flow and the time flow, along with some other automations. To see more of that, you should check out my earlier video. Links are in the description. Now there is one thing that I haven't touched upon yet, and that's the defaults every time we create a new record. And for that, I've created a new template that's called new task, and it's set as a default. Now this template defaults certain values for new tasks. The status is not started. The from and to dates are set to today or the date it's triggered. The frequency by default is single and the task is assigned to the person who duplicated the page. And X days of course is set to one. 
And now that you've defined the database for triggers, let's dive into the three automation configurations. Now, if you open the automations configuration, you will find three automations. One for recurring tasks based on days. The next one is for recurring tasks based on months. And the third one is for task days. Let's open the recurring tasks based on days and take a closer look. Now the trigger here is set to activate when all the conditions or triggers are met. There are two triggers. One is when the status is set to done. And if I open the status done trigger, you'll notice that done is ticked while end is unchecked. So this ensures that recurring tasks don't continue when you set them to end. And you'll see that in the later half of this video. The second trigger activates when the frequency is set to any day-based option from daily to X days. You'll notice here that single is not ticked and neither are any of the month-based frequencies. Now let's look at the actions. The first action sets the done date to the time triggered, not the date triggered. But this gives us the exact date and time when this task was marked as done. Now next we can add this new page to our Weekflow database. That becomes a new task. And within that we'll change five of these properties. This is for the future task, the recurring task. The task, the from date, the to date, the frequency and the x days. Now we'll configure all of this using a custom formula. The tasks page will be set to the trigger page dot task. So what this does is it copies all the default property of the page being duplicated. And for this from date, we'll use a trigger page from date, but add days to the current from date using the date add formula. Now the number of days we can add varies from one to an undefined number in X days. And that's why we'll need to use an ifs condition. That's a multiple if condition. It defines that if the trigger page frequency is set to daily, we'll add one day. And if we continue to alternate days, we'll add two. If it's weekly, it's seven and so on. For X days, we'll use these manually entered X days number instead of a fixed number of days. But this simplifies things as you only need to define X days when you choose this as an option. The to date is configured similarly, moving by the exact number of days as your default task. Now the frequency is copied from the trigger page frequency. The same goes for X days. All I'm saying is you just need to define it once and then the automations continue. And now we can test the days automation to ensure it works correctly. Let's move on to the recurring months automation. Now the months automation is an exact mirror to the days automation with just a few differences. The status is set to done and not to end as we did earlier. Now the frequency here is set to all the month frequencies from monthly to annual and the done status remains at the time triggered. For the new task that's added, the task name, the frequency and X days are copied using the trigger page formula. In the from date, the date add calculations are now based on months, not days. So we define monthly as one, quarterly as three and annual as 12, for example. The same goes for the two date calculations. Once done, let's test it once again and you should see similar results. Now notice here that the done date has been populated with today's date and time, but I still haven't covered how we got these task days. Now task days is calculated as the number of days from the from date till I mark the task as done or end. Yes, this time end is included. For this, I will use a variable. I'll call that as task days and we'll need to define a formula. The formula will be read as date between the date triggered, which is today say, and the from date on the trigger page. The days between is calculated in days plus one to consider today as well. The action would be to push this variable into the number property task days. It's better to create a separate task days automation here, even though you could have included it earlier. The reason we're doing that is the done and the end conditions can be combined. And we can also combine the days and the months frequency tasks. Now, if there's anything you want to be incorporated into this template as I build it, there's a notion form in the description. Please do fill it up. And now that you're equipped with recurring tasks, let's finish this template with projects and time tracking. But for that, you will need to watch this video. To unlock the full power of the Notion formula, you simply can't miss the most powerful formula in Notion. To know more, watch this video.